the more money you have the higher the stake is the more money you have the more you cannot afford to lose and the more you need to protect it and the more you need to invest prudently how do you actually invest a large amount of money it's very different from investing little money but how much is large amount to invest well if you are actually in your 20s anything that is above hundred thousand i would consider as a large amount and if you are in your 30s anything that is larger than 250,000 I would consider as a large amount and if you are nearing retirement age I would consider anything that is more than seven figures would be a large amount to invest as an independent advisor who are licensed to manage multi millions of clients money hopefully you will get useful insights of how to manage your large sum or large amount of money it is like you getting a license driving a normal car but that does not mean that you are qualified or competent enough to drive a ferrari on racetrack or even to drive a formula one car you are going to crash and burn if you think just by having a driving license makes you able to drive 200 km per hour a ferrari on a racetrack but you might feel like, well, that's so overwhelming because there's so many things I need to know. Your PE ratio for stock, intrinsic value for a stocks, like what's the location to invest in property, and do I need to know about technical analysis or timing the market? Now, I could tell you this is such a wrong misconception that you have. You might be confused and overwhelmed with what is out there because every day there's a barrage of information overload non-stop that's coming to you. This really doesn't really help in helping you make a decision because you can spend the entire lifetime learning the what's and the how's without really taking action or getting any meaningful result at all. So how do we solve this problem? Now here's an analogy for you. Now imagine if you are an engineer working at Apple and because engineer emotions are quite stable. <laughs> These are some of your responsibility as an Apple engineer, right? App codes, you know, you have to know iOS, you have to debug the codes, you have to test the codes, you have to make sure the codes are quality enough to be shipped, and then you have to do a bit of a project management as well. And you look at what does the CEO of Apple does, Tim Cook. Well, he has to actually oversee engineering, software, hardware, and IT. He has to understand quality engineering. He has to understand marketing and sales. He has to manage the legal team. He has to actually manage the manufacturing of the subcontractor. He has to manage all the design team. He has to know finance. He has to know customer service. And he also has to actually know what the supply chain and make sure that there's material enough to actually manufacture your iPhone. But here's the thing. Does the CEO of Apple needs to have to, to decide and actually work on every single things no he did not have to he does not have to he just is, is enough for him to have a working fair understanding of how each business division or department does and his job is actually to oversee the whole picture make sure each department or division works closely and productively with each other in order to hit whatever kpi or revenue goals set for the year in other words oversee everything so each business divisions are working with each other in harmony and this is what i want you to imagine for the amount of large amount of investment that you want to invest first of all these are the most basic things that you need to know sector what is the sector to invest what's the allocation whether you need to do rebalancing when and where whether you want to use leverage and whether you know what is the economy situation what's the platform to use and of course what is the business landscape because all these are high level things that you really need to know in order to invest successfully just like in the Tim Cook Apple CEO example, when he has a problem with engineering, he do not need, he does not need to actually go in and solve the problem his own. He just need to approach the engineering director and cascade the message down so that that problem they will ask or hire or get the right person to actually solve a problem that occurs from time to time instead of he going into it and trying to actually solve that problem himself. 
and as an Apple CEO, you know, I believe there are hundreds or millions of problems that's coming his way. But here's the thing. His job is to have a working understanding of all bits and pieces come together, of, of how all the dots actually connect. So that means that some of those things, really, he does not really have to actually act upon or actually fix it himself. He just need to know who are the right people to actually fix that. And he just have to take care, maybe two or even three problems out of the hundreds problem that's coming his way. For example, if you are investing, you should be concerned about you know what funds or how to actually do asset allocation instead of worrying about what are the stocks to pick because if you have a portfolio or whether it's a funds, whether it's an ETF, this job of stock checking has already been taken care of by the fund manager. And if I were to compare as an Apple engineer, now an engineer is not to trivialize the role of an engineer, but an engineer of from Apple probably get paid like half a million a year versus the CEO of Apple is being paid like hundreds of millions. So I want you to think about you being the CEO of the large amount of money that you're trying to invest rather than the engineer of the money you're trying to invest. Because here's the thing, if the Apple CEO Tim Cook is going to do the job of an Apple engineer, he's not, he wouldn't able to actually perform on the job because he has no programming experience, probably, right? An engineer is suitable to do what he's best at, which is to come up with the app or to come up with the hardware. Whereas the strength and the focus of the CEO of an organization in this sense, the CEO of your own money, is basically to make sure they are being parked and allocated and being managed and monitored correctly rather than you hands-on doing things like stock picking you know doing things like uh, reading the annual statements because that is not the CEO's job there's a lot of information out there that are rubbish and there's only a small part of information that is really good actionable information that you can use and even a smaller part of that a subset of that is really actually the information that truly move the needle so you have to ask yourself whenever you are going to do anything in your investment journey you have to ask has this been taken care of by somebody else who are smarter and are more experienced or have more time into this like stock picking right and then you have to ask yourself do i really need to do this myself at the end of the day, this is how you get the best optimum result from investing a large amount of money. If you need help to become a better CEO of your own money. Now, here's the difference. I'm not trying to become CEO of your money. Why clients come to us for advisory is basically because we are like this sponge that have been advising our clients our existing and past clients, which is probably very similar to you. And we have seen all the success and mistake that they have made. And by learning from the sponge, I am the sponge, you could actually shortcut your way to success or make less mistakes. A smart man learn from the mistake, uh, even wiser men learn from the mistake of others. So this will enable you to become a better CEO of your own money. Because let's face it, Nobody is born or unnaturally made to be the CEO of your own money or even the CEO of an organization. We are just here to help to show you some insights or tips or strategy that you did not even know before. So when you are actually uh, managing your own investment or you're talking to your insurance agent, your unit trust agent, your banker and all that, you know exactly what to expect. If there is something that you find valuable, check out the description below where this video is and there should be a link there. Just fill in an application form and then for us to actually evaluate whether you are suitable to become one of our clients or not. If you have found this video useful, click on the like button and hit on subscribe and also the notification bell so you'll get notified when we publish more videos like this.